And hello everybody and welcome to this next part in the top 11 video tutorial series. In this part we're going to discuss the do's and the don'ts of a level 1 team. By that I mean when you're in your first season and you just got your team, what are the things you want to concentrate on doing and what are the things you want to avoid doing? So first we're going to talk about the do's. You definitely want to farm tokens, boosters, and money. If you don't know how to do that, I've got another video that will explain all that in detail but you definitely need to do that. You won't need them all immediately, but when you get to higher levels, you're gonna need a lot more of this stuff. So you definitely want to get that stuff because it's available, so there's just no reason not to. Secondly, you're gonna look at your roster and you're gonna to look to see younger players that are expensive, the fast trainers that don't really fit into your team. For example, on my friend's team, when she got her team, she had a three-star player who was expensive. And he, he played a position which she didn't even want to use. So what was the point of having this guy? He's tying up a lot of money. He wasn't that good. And he didn't really even fit into the formation she wanted to run. So this guy has no value to us. So she sold him and then bought three five-star players with the money. Now they were older and they weren't going to last but a couple of seasons, but still that's three quality players that she got just by giving up this one guy. So that's definitely something to do. The other thing you want to do is to look for young three-star players that have an F by their name. By that I mean on the transfer list, if you see a player who has an F next to their value, that means that you actually don't have to pay that. You only have to pay their salary. So they are free players. Now, you still have to bid on them with tokens, but if you see a guy who's young and can train quickly, there's two things you can do with this. You can train him up and use him, because this guy might be a good player, or you can just buy him if you can get him for one token, immediately turn around and sell him, and usually collect a reasonably nice profit there. So there's two things you can do with that. My friend also did that when she was in level one. She bought a player that was three stars. He was, I believe, 20 or 21. And he actually turned out to be a very nice player. And for two seasons, he started and did really well. So there's no reason why that can't be done again. The other thing you want to do is try out different formations if you can. Don't lock yourself into one formation because you just don't know what's going to work with the players you have. So try out different things. Get players that can play multiple positions. Try different things and see what works. The other thing you want to do is identify which players you can build around. If you get a younger player who's really good, especially if he plays an important position, then you can build your team around this guy. When I got my first team, I had an 18-year-old striker who scored over a goal a game. And he continued doing that for several more seasons. So I didn't have to worry about striker at all for several seasons because I knew that if nothing else, I had this guy who's going to score me a lot of goals. So if you can identify even one of those guys your first season, that's going to be a huge lift because you can really start to build a strategy and a formation around which of these guys you have. In my case, it was a striker. So I would just look for defense. And you definitely need to upgrade your stadium in the correct order. Even if you don't have a lot of money, that's something that you just can't put off. That must be done immediately. If you don't know what this order is, check my video out on stadiums. It will tell you everything you want to know, what they all do, the correct order. So if you have any questions about that, definitely check that out. So that covers the things you definitely want to do your first season. Let's, let's uh, cover the things you don't want to do. The thing you definitely don't want to do is you don't want to buy expensive fast trainers. You're not going to have the money to do this. So if you want to have a successful first season, you're more likely going to want to buy several four and five star players that aren't as expensive. These players are most likely in their mid twenties. And while they'll probably be only good for a couple of seasons, you, when you get your first team, you're not going to have a lot of good players. So you really need quantity. If you get quality too, that's just a bonus. 
but you just can't afford to have two or three 18 year old fast trainers because you're just not going to have enough money for the rest of your team. So stay away from those guys at first. If you're blessed with one which fits in to your team and does really well like I got, well, then you can keep him and just consider yourself lucky. But don't go out of your way to get those because it's just not good use of resources. Also, don't buy any players over 30 because if they retire the next season, you just lose that money. So that's pretty bad. You don't want to do that. Money is too precious your first couple of seasons. When you get more advanced and have a lot of money stored up, that might be something you can afford to do if you see a player you really want, but that's just not something that would make a lot of sense your first season. Also, don't use tokens on anything except for players. Don't buy jerseys. Don't uh, do something silly like uh, rush your stadium upgrade. You'll get a chance to do all that stuff later, but you really need to have a lot of tokens in reserve because you don't know when you're going to really need them. And you want to make sure you have them. That also includes buying scouts. Don't do that. Your first several seasons, you're not going to need them. So that's just flushing tokens down the toilet. So definitely stay away from the scout list. And also don't get involved in any bidding wars because you just don't need to do that right away. The, the competition for players won't be that tough. So if it's a bidding war, just stay away. You'll find the players you need. You don't need to be that strong your first season. Next, don't use boosters except when you need to. If your best player gets injured, then sure, go ahead and heal him. But if your sub defender or your just your second midfielder gets injured, just use just use a sub. Don't use up a lot of red packs early because you won't have that many. So be very conservative in how you use the boosters and make sure you always have a nice surplus and a nice reserve just in case. Because top 11 will definitely try to screw you over and make your best player get injured two or three games in a row. It does happen. You need to be prepared for it. Also, if you have three matches in one day, you definitely want to have enough green packs available so you can rest up your players. If I was playing against a couple of weak teams, I might play quite a few of my reserve players in order to save these and then just play my best players against the good team. That's definitely a very viable strategy when you're first starting out since level one is more or less like a tutorial. There might only be a couple of human managers in your league, so you can definitely get away with playing a lot of players the first couple of seasons to try to save up on green packs. And don't offer large win bonuses. Again, money is too precious. You're not going to have a lot of money, so you just don't want to do that. The players will, will most likely overpower the other teams as long as you're active and as long as you just try to win. So you're not going to have to do that. When you get up to higher levels, you definitely will want to do that for all the games. But starting out, it's not really necessary. So that about covers the do's and don'ts for a level 1 team. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.